One way to think about migraine is that there's probably some sort of central generator or switch which turns on pathways that you could see at the bottom of the slide that go out to the meninges. And in the meninges, there are peripheral pain mechanisms that actually are the source of the migraine pain. What happens in the meninges is a release of neuroinflammatory and vasodilating peptides, and that combination of neurogenic inflammation and vasodilation activate and sensitize nociceptive afferents that carry the signal back into the brain for integration. So the targets for migraine treatment involve reversal uh, or prevention of some of those mechanisms. Acute treatment could reverse the vasodilation by vasoconstricting or prevent the release of the neuroinflammatory and vasodilating peptides, which you can see in two. There are two ways of doing that. One can activate serotonin 1B receptors to vasoconstrict, activate serotonin 1D receptors to prevent the release of the neuroinflammatory peptides, or prevent the return of the signal back to the brain stem via activation of serotonin 1D receptors. In addition, the primary most potent vasodilating peptide is calcitonin gene-related peptide, or CGRP. And triptans prevent the release of CGRP while they vasoconstrict and reverse the vasodilation of CGRP, but newer uh, different kinds of classes of medication are targeting CGRP, both for acute treatment and preventive treatment of migraine. Let's start with some basics on migraine diagnosis. There is an international classification of headache disorders, third edition, beta version, and migraine without aura is classified or diagnosed as recurrent episodes of headache lasting four to 72 hours with at least two of the following four. One-sided location, throbbing quality, moderate or severe intensity, aggravated by routine physical activity, and at least one of the following two, nausea, dislike of light, and noise. And it's a little bit like going down a menu list, and if the patient has two out of four and one out of two in a normal exam and the correct duration and a stable pattern, the diagnosis is pretty secure. Aura is a recurrent episode of unilateral, fully reversible visual, sensory, or speech or language dysfunction these uh, episodes usually develop gradually, usually last five to 60 minutes, and are generally but not always followed by migraine headache and associated migraine symptoms. <clears throat> the frequency of the attacks determines the subtype of migraine. Episodic migraine occurs less than 15 headache days per month. Chronic migraine occurs in 15 or more headache days per month for at least three months. And in those 15 or more headache days, at least eight days fulfill ICHD criteria for migraine or respond to migraine-specific medicines or are recognized by the patient as being migraine. Now, as one diagnoses migraine, there's always the question of when to work the patient up. And a nice adage is that a stable pattern of episodic disabling headache of at least six months duration is usually migraine. Workup, which would include imaging, is reserved for atypical presentations, that is, patients who don't meet the ICHD criteria, or a focal exam. Otherwise, you can be pretty confident that somebody has recurrent migraine. There are a few brief screeners for diagnosing migraine in addition to the ICHD criteria. One is a three item questionnaire developed by Richard Lipton and colleagues at Albert Einstein Medical School. And the second is a single criterion diagnosis that was uh, described by Vincent Martin and colleagues at the University of Cincinnati. The ID migraine screener has three questions, presence or absence of nausea, presence or absence of photophobia, presence or absence of impact or disability. With two of those three positive, the sensitivity for those three questions would be 0.81 and specificity would be 0.75 for a migraine diagnosis. 
you remember the 0.81 and 0.75, you get to something very interesting when one looks for the single best one variable model for diagnosing migraine. And Vince Martin studied this in a variety of clinics and settings and found that nausea by itself in a stable pattern of episodic headache had an overall sensitivity of 81% and an overall specificity of 83%. So it may be that simply having a patient with episodic, recurrent, stable headaches and nausea associated with those headaches is just as good as any other way of making a diagnosis of migraine. Having diagnosed the migraine, our patients are going to ask for acute treatments. Let's look at these acute treatments for episodic migraine and talk a little bit about the goal of acute treatment. And I actually think it is worth discussing this with a patient at the beginning. The goal of the acute treatment is to terminate an attack of migraine and by doing so, decrease the risk of episodic migraine becoming chronic migraine, of chronification or transformation from a lower frequency of headache days to a higher frequency of headache days. The acute treatment should be a one and done response and should result in a pain freedom at two hours rather than just relief with minimal adverse events and a low likelihood of headache recurrence. Richard Lipton, Lipton and colleagues again did a very important study published in January of 2015 which found that inadequate acute treatment efficacy was associated with an increased risk of the new onset of chronic migraine in episodic migraineurs over the course of a year. That is, poor acute treatment increased the risk of transformation to daily headache or near daily headache. The hope is that if one optimizes acute treatment outcomes and gets best acute treatment, that we might be able to prevent new onset chronic migraine during that period of time. So that's a very important study in terms of making us pay more close attention to the importance of acute treatment. There is level A evidence for the following classes of acute treatment triptans, NSAIDs, and ergots, and consensus clinical recommendations are for the use of those major categories, triptans, dihydroergotamine, DHE, nonspecific, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories, and combinations of triptans and NSAIDs. At present, there are seven triptans available in the United States, and depending on which one selects, they can be administered orally, subcutaneously, nasally, or by iontophoretic skin patch. There are other formulations coming, and although triptans have transformed the acute management of episodic migraine, they are not 100% effective in their current uh, classes. One research goal is to improve the efficacy of current acute treatments, and that can occur by new delivery systems or formulations, by neuromodulation devices, which don't involve drugs at all, but which target the same areas in the brain, or by new classes of acute treatment, completely new classes. Now, what happens, of course, conventionally in treatment is that we give oral tablets to our patients because this is a tablet or pill preference country. And if that fails, if oral treatment fails, we need to reevaluate what we're doing in terms of optimizing acute treatment. One problem can be the need for non-oral formulation. There are four formulations currently of sumatriptan. There are two formulations currently of zolmatriptan. There is a nasal formulation of DHE and of ketorolac. And so switching to a non-oral formulation may be in the patient's best interest. However, it may be that the class or type of drug was not right for that patient and they need to change the drug. It may be that the patient did not treat early in an attack, which uh, if, with, with delay of treatment being associated with less effective treatment. It may be that the dose was not optimal and it's w worth reviewing what the optimal dose response curve is and what the optimal dose would be for a particular treatment. Or one could actually leave medications and consider prescribing a neuromodulation device for acute treatment for a patient. So I want to review with you what the key messages are. Migraine can be diagnosed by the ICHD3 criteria. Those are the standard of care, but brief screeners can help you in leading to a migraine diagnosis rapidly. Episodic acute migraine treatment is preferable with migraine-specific treatment, 
and one's goal should be a sustained, pain-free response. Non-oral approaches should be used when oral tablets fail, and non-oral approaches include non-oral medication formulations, both FDA-approved and some, some coming in um, development, as well as neuromodulation devices. Investigational new formulations, new medication classes, and new devices are being studied. Thank you.